I wish you a happy new year. And I greet you to the first meeting under the word in this new year, 2021. A short information to all of you. There's another link for the English speaking community. Please look into your email and join the link to the English speaking audience. A happy new year to all of you. Not only from this place, but also from the student council. I wish you all the best. Um, if you have good ideas and thoughts or problems in this year, please come to us, come to me. I'm also to the responsible persons in the student council. We want to have open ears for you. Today we have Sigma with us in this meeting under the word. He has presented us an interesting topic. It's about mercy. Mercy is more than pity. I'm looking forward to what he is going to do. And I want to join with Sigma and Of course, a lot of you know Dittmar. He is well known in Friedensau because of his activities here on campus and especially during the times of isolation. I remember when Dittmar and Renate came to my door with a basket full of candy and we were ask to pick one piece and we took it as an encouragement and so thank you very much Ditma, for your engagement for the students and here on campus in the beginning i want to ask you two questions to know you better maybe this is of interest for the students and for the teachers here I want to appeal to your wisdom and to your experience <clears throat> looking to this coming year. It could happen that somebody will have problems or difficulties or come into stress or have ex existential problems or problems in faith. So I want to ask you, Ditma, what can you advise to a person who will have maybe problems like these? What can a person do? Yes, you have mentioned a broad variety of problems. When I put that together, I would say take contact with a chaplain or with Renate and turn to people who can trust. This is maybe a good thing. <coughs> when we <coughs> have our thoughts in mind and it is helpful to verbalize these things and to talk to a certain person of trust. Yes, that's a good, that's a good advice. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for that. So we can contact you. As I mentioned, you know, we know you <coughs> for a long period of time. You are well known person in Friedensau. So. 
And you may know that Ditmer store is open through day and night for everybody who has problems. Second question. You have your heart on your tongue. You an extrovert person. We seem to know you well, but I want to ask you in the name of the students, do you have hidden talents that may not be known to each one of us? Well, that's a difficult question. I don't know what is known. I'm not so extrovert because I sometimes find myself in thinking a lot, looking for solutions, but hidden talents. Hmm. Um, from my point of view, I would say for my work, for my profession, but it's not so much wanted. That's my practical um, gifts, like doing some handiwork, some practical things. That's what I like to do. I'm, I'm, I like to, I like to fix, fix my car, work on my machines to fix and repair things. And like, I like to do sports and what I also, a gift is what falls in my lap. So the practical gifts I have brought me to taking a profession like that. And of course, you can develop and further that talent. And I also see that my son has a gift like that. And he is much more using that. And I th am thankful that he got this gift from me. Thank you very much for that. And to that practical gift. And, and we know you as taking some unusual transport, means of transport. And that's an interesting topic. Thank you for listening to your topic. Mercy, before we will listen to that, I want to ask for the protection and blessing of God. Let's pray. Our God, thank you for leading us into this new year. Thank you for having another year where we will experience a lot and experience a lot and also give a lot to others. Thank you now for this meeting under the word. And thank you for Ditma preparing for that. And please give Ditma your words in his mouth that you speak through him and give us what we shall hear. Thank you for your presence in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
and that's chapter 6, 26, 36. Be merciful even as your father is merciful. My topic is mercy is more than pity. So what is mercy? What is compassion? And if I look into the context of the text, we see that the text at first talks about love to our enemies. So to understand mercy, we have also to read verse 35, which is a which is a result from the verses before, which you can read on your own. So 35, <clears throat> but love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the selfish. That's a surprising sentence. Jesus talks about left to enemies and says we should do good and love our enemies. Do we have enemies? Do you have enemies? People you don't like who work and act differently? Maybe that's not our reality. But maybe there are persons we don't like we don't have so much sympathy with, or we have the impression that they don't like us. And then we judge. And that is where Jesus speaks against. He says that God is kind to the ungrateful. <coughs> That's a quality of God. That is what God is doing to us. Mercy, kindness. And then Jesus says, be merciful, even as your father is merciful. And if we take verse 37, because in some Bibles, the passage ends in verse 35, and the new starts with 36, when it is about um, judgment. But in some translations, verse 36 is attributed to the love to enemies. enemies. 37, judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Here we can say that mercy towards people that act unfair to me or to others, and yet being merciful, that's a divine characteristic. But what is mercy? And maybe we know the story of the good Samaritan. where many passed by, but only one had compassion. The others that went by uh, 
there's lying somebody, well, I better be not too close and lest I be harmed. Maybe this is a just punishment. That was the thinking of that time. And then there's somebody who is merciful. And merciful means not only having pity, feeling sorry, but really helping someone. Not doing something to get something back. That's what almost everything does. If somebody helps me, I feel obliged to help him again. And if I helped somebody, maybe I expect help from, from them and I ask somebody I have helped already before. That is give and take, that's a deal. But merciful means to help somebody without no uh, that and knowing that he cannot help me there's somebody with contact to africa he knows a family who is poor and he supports that family now the father of that family became sick he got an infection and that person suffers from that infection more than one month but there is no health insurance in that country and he cannot go to the doctor <clears throat> now that man um, gives money to that man in Africa and he can go to the doctor and he becomes healthy again and he writes back thank you for your support and I thank God that he made it possible and he also says I cannot give it back to you I cannot express my gratefulness in any way but I ask God that he may bless you, that you can continue to help. That means, and I can say from my own experience, that I got support as a young, and that is compassion. So that I could develop and progress as I, as I did. So, when you experience mercy and compassion, you feel motivated to be also merciful and help, and help others without having in my mind, I can get something back. That is merciful act and God is the foundation of that mercy because God turns to man, forgives the sins that we may have peace with him and that we may find um, the real life back. So somebody got cancer and we say yes we will pray that the cancer may be healed but the patient said i know that i cannot claim anything from god i cannot say i have done that and that to you so make me healthy again no we don't have that claim God has, yes, experienced healing. The operation 
went well and he's doing better. And that is experienced as mercy, mercy of God. And for that, the person is grateful and maybe motivated to be merciful to others. And the Bible calls us to be merciful even to those who may be strange persons. I thank Itie for that thumbnail. There's a person living on in the streets and he has a sign and looks for for kindness, for human kindness. I think we should not judge about others and not withdraw our help. Maybe thinking, well, it's, it's your own fault. Maybe sometimes we think like that. I sometimes experience that. But when somebody really needs help, we should not refrain from that. And we also may think about how can we act merciful here on our campus. Maybe not only in a material way. Yes, in Matthew 25, Jesus says, yes, you have given me food and you have given me clothes, you have visited me, you have visited me when I was sick and all of that. Yes, these are situations where we can help in a practical way, where somebody is in need. Not only in a material way, but also uh, spiritual needs emotional needs, where we can go to somebody, have an open ear, walk a mile with that person. That is compassion. But the text also says we can also ask for something. Maybe and maybe help others even if it may not be easy because we'd like to judge. During these times where we have to distance, which I cannot visit others, cannot invite others. You have them, you have maybe negative thoughts. And then when I see somebody who is alone and isolated, maybe I can get in contact with that person. That is allowed. We can contact a person Maybe go to a person and invite him to go for a walk outside in nature and to change thoughts and ideas. That is not only good for the other one, but maybe also for me. Maybe somebody needs maybe a ride to the to town, downtown, or they need some food or some clothes <clears throat> and we can give some support. I know that this can also be seen in Friedensau TV and I believe that the elderly people have so much experienced mercy and can also show mercy and are willing to support others. I know 
that many in our village feel connected to students and are willing to support. Please continue in this act of mercy. Please be watchful about others. If somebody needs help, please do so, even if that person may have acted uncomfortable and try to include persons, not to exclude them. If you're not part of a group, please try to to find a small group where you can meet on a regular basis, where with that distance you have to have, you can talk, you can pray together, pray for one another, where you can see what you can do for others. That is merciful behavior. I wish that we realize how God was merciful in our own lives so that we can be hands of mercy for others and pass on the mercy of God to them. Before I pray, I want to read a, a verse in Jude, verse 2. Jude, verse 2. The epistle to Jude, of Jude. There's only one chapter in the epistle of Jude, and this is verse 2. May mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Let's pray. Our great God, thank you that you are merciful to us. And we want to be merciful from the depth of our heart. Open our eyes and give us opportunities to act like you. Forgive us, please, where we judged about others. And may we contempt them. Forgive us and make us able to help everybody, even those who don't like us. Lord, we thank you that you have loved us before we could accept your love. You loved us as we were enemies to you. Let us act like you. Give us your spirit to understand your character, to amplify that in our lives. We pray in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ditma, thank you very much for your motivating words. And I have an idea for this new year. Somebody want to maybe make some sports in the new year, but in this active, merciful, It says one year later, you would wish that you should start today. So do not procrastinate mercy to start next week, next year.
but we can start every day to be merciful to others and to act to them like that. We do have some information to you. This coming th Thursday, we, you can see the worship service from this last Sabbath in Friedensau TV this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. On Friday, 7.30, we have Shabbat Shalom. And this coming Sabbath, we have no German worship service from Friedensau, but we have a worship service with a church in Germany. And the English service, of course, will take place at 11.30. So I want to finish this meeting under the word and I want to pass on to Tobias Koch, who has some information for the people here. I thank you for watching this um, worship service and I'm saying goodbye to you. Thank you very much. Also, from my side, all the best for you. May God bless you in this new year. And I hope that we can experience some relaxation uh, in terms of the corona situation, maybe not during the next weeks. Maybe we can suspend this corona information sometime later. But now we still have to take note of some information. We are happy that the students who were traveling or who had traveled came back safely. And as far as I know, we have no corona infection on campus. So we can start the semester and continue the semester con corona free. However, <coughs> We have a very intense situation in our country in terms of the pandemic. There are also these new um, virus from Great Britain, and there is still a high rate of infection in our county. We have 150 instead of 50 or less. So we can accept that we have to continue the shutdown that has starting after Christmas. And you know that we have to continue at least till the end of January, which means that many shops keep closed and we cannot go to the to the barber shop. So we are not allowed to have contact with more than one person except our own household. This of course means that we do not have any face-to-face -face classes till the end of the semester. There will be no exceptions. The only event in face-to-face -face meetings is the final tests at the end of the semester where you prepare for. We have also reduced the number of persons to meet in a certain classroom for internet connection. So feel free to go to our classrooms for internet access, but not more than two persons at a time. And you have to write your name in the list. Yes, and you 
see that we have to change the Mensa service, which means we can have no, um, no dining room there. You can only uh, have the uh, takeaway service. There's also a limitation to mobility, mobility, mobility. If there should be a higher rate than 200 in our county, we are not allowed to travel more than 15 kilometers. We are still um, away from that number. But we take it's serious that we do not travel if not absolutely necessary. And what about vaccination? We may ask. There was a vaccination um, procedure in the seniors' home last Friday. And we are happy about that, so they can be relatively safe there. So there's a list of priorities and according to that, there will be vaccination. And there will be this mobile vaccination service till January 19 in the seniors home. And after that, there will be those vaccination centers. The next one in, in Burg. Sorry for my coughing. <laughs> um, so if there are appointments available for these vaccination centers, we will let you know. According to what we know from science, vaccination or a experienced sickness does not change our behavior. So those persons will not be suspended from distance and all of these hygiene rules because we do not know for sure if they um, will be infectious or not. So <clears throat> we cannot differentiate yet. And it also means that vaccination protects ourselves from sickness, but we do not know for sure if it also prevents spreading the virus. This um, has yet to be uh, found out, but until then, um, also vaccinated persons have to comply with the safety rules. So I hope that we can master these new situations because we estimate that this will go beyond January um, and we don't know what we have to expect but this, of course, is dependent on how we behave and take that seriously. So please 
comply with all these rules and of course stay healthy and and this wish will accompany us through the next through this year so all the best for you and 